said, there's a job to be done. Young Francis Asbury said, send me. So they put him on a boat tail across the sea. Now, he didn't know a tea party was brewing and the American Revolution was stewing. And by the time that the war was won, why, a brand new church had just begun. Right here in the U.S. of A., freeborn garrison rode for weeks all over the countryside, calling all the preachers to Baltimore for a Christmas conference. Asbury became a bishop, a new denomination was officially formed, and they called it the Methodist Episcopal Church. Well, there were three different groups in those early days, and they were going their own separate ways, started their own publishing houses, you see, to get the word out more effectively. There were Methodist Episcopals, United Brethren too, and the Evangelical Association who would all get together on down the line. Gordon Cox. Howdy do. Peterson. They just didn't know it right at the time. Well, the country was growing from shore to shore, and so were the Methodists, and what's more, they were traveling and preaching to the countryside, and all the ministers went on a circuit ride. Woo, that was tough. The rain and sleet and snow on horseback, you see. And when the weather got real bad, people used to say it was only fit for crows and Methodist preachers. And the spirit was moving in those early days, you know. Camp meetings all over the place, and churches started popping up everywhere. But the country growing like it did, there were problems too that couldn't be hit. Just look at the Indians in the situation, the government sent them to a reservation. Yeah, some Methodists didn't like that at all. Uh-uh, they marched right along with them on the Trail of Tears out west. Now the nation wasn't even a century old when somebody yelled, California gold! Come and get it. Half the country went out west, including some of those Methodists. Of course, there were other folks already out there. I wonder what they thought. Now the government was a democracy, and lay people said, that's the way it should be in the church. Everybody should have a say, but everybody didn't always see it that way. Uh-uh. Then somebody else said, the land of the free's got to do something about slavery. No sooner had they opened their mouth and the war broke out between the North and the South. And there were Methodists on both sides. When it was all over, folks began to see all of God's children got to be free. But that wasn't the end of it. Mm -mm. Even today, the struggle goes on. Now the nation was growing by leaps and bounds, and everywhere Methodists could be found, they started missions and hospitals, colleges too. They went to India and China and Timbuktu. Now the age of the machine soon was here, and there were cities and factories far and near, and the Methodists saw there were workers in need, so they adopted themselves a social creed. An end to child labor, the right of workers to organize. One day of And the women kept on and made some more dents, and finally got seated at General Conference. And they worked real hard to get the right to vote and put up the first sail on the temperance boat. Well, been through a lot in 200 years, been war and gore and lots of tears. And some of those folks who split back then decided to get together again. Now we have our fussing and fighting in the fifth, which is called United Methodist. Now ain't that something? This video was brought to you by the people of the United Methodist Church through world service donations.